You're the keeper of my word. word. <laughs> God's still keeping promises. Look at somebody and tell them, God's still keeping promises. <laughs> May not come when you want him to, but God's time frame and our time frame are two different time frames. My word to you is wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait. I say on the Lord, we certainly are grateful, my wife and I, my entire family, for the 15 years that we have been the pastor here at Zion Pentecostal Church. We want to thank God for the platform that we stand on, for the founder and the establishmentarian, the honorable, the early District Elder Donnell L. Lifford, and all that he and his wife sold in to this ministry, we will never forget the bridge that brought us over. So to everyone that has loved us, that has had patience with us, amen, that has cared and showed kindness to us, even on last week, all of the wonderful cards for Father's Day that were extended unto us, I want each and every one of you to know that though we didn't get a personal call from us, we are grateful, we are thankful that you saw fit enough to render and purchase and show us your love and your appreciation. We're going to move into the word of the Lord today, but as we do that, I want you to remember in prayer uh, the Hardeman family. Our beloved brother, Nelson Hardeman, went on to be with the Lord a couple of days ago. Skip, we called him Skip. His name was Nelson. That is the cousin of Evangelist Tina Lining. And so those services are going to be next Friday. And I believe it starts at 10 o'clock a.m. with the wake and 1030 for the services. We want to be with mindful of that service. He was a tremendous worker, worked in so many capacities here at Zion Pentecostal Church, and we thank God for him and all that he labored in the vineyard to do. Then on Saturday, we're going to be celebrating the homegoing service of Sister Dorothy Williams, and that is the mother of Sister Carol Peterson. She's here uh, so that everyone knows her in the red dress. Kind of wave your hand, Sister Carol, so everybody can see that even in the midst of grief and sorrow, she came out to worship the Lord. And she's also a band uh, with her sister, Sister Charlene Fuller Dingus. Uh, uh, that is her sister, and they're both members here. And we just want to show the love of God that is shed abroad in our hearts that we are not only a church that gives God praise, glory, and honor, but we are a compassionate church and that we are an empathetic church that when those uh, who have lost loved ones, we then extend vows of compassion and mercy uh, to those to let them know that this is indeed a family affair and that God not only will take care of you, but the family that God has surrounded you with will do the very same in Jesus' name. So let's keep that in prayer. They tell me Evangelist Rucker, her dad, um, past, uh, Minister Austin, that he was back into the hospital, amen, experienced some, some problems. So we're keeping uh, that family in prayer as well. And anyone else that is experiencing trauma in their lives, we want you to know that God is able, according to the word of God, to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or think according to the power of God that works on the inside of you. So again, to all of our friends and visitors, thank you for coming to Zion Pentecostal Church of Christ. And as you stand with us today, I'm going to ask that you would open your Bibles 
and turn to the book of Mark. Mark uh, chapter number 10, where we will extract the reading of the Lord from Mark chapter 10. And we will begin reading at verse number 46. 46. We had a beautiful wedding here on yesterday, Sister Vernay. Amen, Weatherspoon, the daughter of Sister Renee Weatherspoon, got married to Fred Maurer on yesterday. What a beautiful wedding, and so we just thank God that the Bible is true when it says train up a child in the way that they should go. When they're old, they will not depart from it. So there's a lot going on at Zion. This coming week, we have the young people that will be engaged from Wednesday all the way through Sunday with their programming, and they are doing an outstanding and commendable job in making sure that we treat and give our young people, amen, the things that are needed to grow, to become more spiritual so that the world doesn't pull them out and steal and kill and destroy them, but they are protected and covered in the house of God. Those of you that have your Bibles, would you be so kind as to share with your neighbor from the 10th chapter of the book of Mark. We're going to begin looking at verse number 46. Mark 10 and 46. If you have it, say amen. And they came to Jericho, and as he, meaning Jesus, went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. Shut up. Be quiet. Stop making all of that racket. But he cried the more, a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? As if Jesus didn't already know that he was blind. The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Brothers and sisters, if you would turn with me back to the 47th verse. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. For a few moments today, I would like you to think upon the subject. Something happens when you call the name of Jesus. Something happens when you call the name of Jesus. Dear kind and gracious Father, we come to you indeed grateful for the uniqueness of this privilege that you have given unto us to stand in your presence and to call upon your wonderful name. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower, 
and the righteous runneth into it, and we are safe. Safe from the cares and the storms of life. Safe from the hand of the enemy. Safe, God, because you have put a mystery covering around us, and you have saturated us with your redeeming blood. I pray now, God, that all flesh would be silent before you, and that your glory would be revealed in this place. Please give your servant now clarity of speech, the ability to impart wisdom and knowledge and information, but most of all, divine revelation. God will give you the glory, will give you the praise, will give you the honor, because it belongs unto you. These blessings and prayers we ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Something happens when you call the name of Jesus. Can I get about 50 folk just to say Jesus? Jesus. Now you said it, something is already in the works because it's impossible to call his name and something not get ready to happen. There is a very interesting scene playing out before us in this scenario of Jesus healing a man that was blind. When we examine the word of God, we find that this text, along with others, is filled with nuggets of gold. Jesus, brothers and sisters, specialized in healing the blind. And on many occasions, he healed the blind as a special demonstration of who he really was. For you see, the giving of sight to the blind was probably perceived as the second most improbable healing behind being raised from the dead. It was deemed almost impossible, just like being raised from the dead seemed impossible until Jesus came on the scene. When we look, brothers and sisters, in the ninth and the 20th chapters of the book of Matthew, he healed the blind while coming into what the Bible says was his city. When you examine and research what was the city of God, it is the city of Capernaum. Jesus also healed two blind men while he was leaving the city of Jericho. And as he left Jericho, the Bible says, a great multitude, throngs of people began to follow him. And the multitudes thronged around him, but they followed him presumably because of the miracles that he had already performed. In other words, they were following him not because of who he was, but they followed him because of what he had done. In other words, they were following him because of not who he was, but they really didn't know who he was, so they were following him for the fanfare. I don't want you to miss it today. They followed him because of fascination and not because of revelation. Uh, there are people today who come to church because of fascination and not salvation. They are drawn by the pageantry, the songs, the praise, and the worship, but not necessarily the God of the worship. Brothers and sisters, they are drawn by friendship with people rather than fellowship with God. Even when we examine the motives of Bartimaeus. He initially took his place by the side of the road, not to meet with Jesus or anyone else that he thought could restore his sight, but rather to elicit sympathy and empathy by using his disability as a blind man to beg for a living. There is something fascinating about the healing of the blind that captures our attention because not only is it a physical miracle, but it provides for us a spiritual principle. 
The scripture often employs the imagery of blindness to describe a, a spiritual condition of people who are either unable or number two, unwilling to perceive a divine revelation. And that is because the things of God are perceived not by observation and inquiry, but by revelation and illumination. Those that have a relationship with God, he delights in providing to them the revelations of life. The light of God will always dispel darkness, both natural and spiritual. And when we examine the importance of the presence of light, it is first mentioned, as we have read, in the, the book of the beginnings, Genesis chapter number 1 and verses 1 through 4. Remember the word of God says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. God doesn't have to make light. God is light. So whenever God steps into your dark and your dismal situation, he brings light with him. And God saw the light, but it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. There it is, brothers and sisters. Uh, God always divides light from darkness. Uh, so no matter what you're going through, if you can come to the light, everything is going to be all right. So when God separated the light from the darkness, he showed uh, that light is essential for the existence of life. Uh, in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, he validates what Genesis has already declared unto us. He tells us that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. The same was in the beginning with God. Uh, he says, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Here it is. Uh, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Uh, everything about God has to do with light. There is plenty of darkness in the world to cause many of us to tremble and to fear if we let it. Uh, cancer ravages our families, killing half a million people every single year in the United States alone. Uh, pressures are mounting in our society to demonize and suppress uh, Christianity, racial tensions, uh, the spirit of superiority, and other kinds of darkness are coming out of the background and surging to the forefront after years of perceived progress. We, we, we look and we hear people saying, let's make America great again. I don't understand that when was America so great when we were a man enslaving minorities? Uh, was, was, was America so great, uh, a man, when we were putting blacks in proportionally in jail for something that we're legalizing right now? When was America so great? I think it's because what we were not great at has now come out of the dark and is trying to present itself in the light. Brothers and sisters, every day over 1,000 babies around the world are aborted. Therefore, the Apostle Paul begins to say it like this. He illuminates what is happening in the world. And Paul says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against, here it is, the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh, amen. The devil has been successful uh, in putting people in governmental positions uh, that have no desire for your well-being. But look at somebody real quick and tell them, God has not forgotten about you. I began to question myself as to who are the rulers of the darkness of this world. And immediately the Spirit of God directed me to John chapter 3 verses 19 and 21 
And it says, and this is the condemnation, uh, that light is come into the world. Uh, but men love darkness rather than light, uh, because their deeds are evil. Uh, for everyone that doeth evil, they hate the light. Uh, so you don't have to worry about when people start hating on you, uh, it's because you are children of the light. Uh, they have no alternative uh, but to dislike you uh, because Jesus said if they disliked him, uh, they're going to dislike you. Uh, but look at three people and tell them keep on shining. Uh, keep on illuminating. Keep on bringing dirt uh, and ungodliness uh, and pervasiveness uh, and pernicious ways out of the dark uh, so that the devil runs uh, when he sees a child of God coming. Can somebody put your hands together and give your God some praise? Uh, he said, but everybody that does the truth uh, cometh into the light that his deeds may be made manifest. Uh, they that are wrought and God, uh, brothers and sisters, we are children of the light. Uh, so I ask God, who are the rulers of darkness? Uh, who are those that prevail in this world who love uh, to masquerade around as light? Because the Bible says, even the devil, uh, even Lucifer, for himself uh, has transformed himself uh, into an angel of light. Uh, what the Bible is telling us, don't get fooled uh, by what the enemy is trying to perpetrate uh, against the church of the living God. Uh, one of the first things I began to ask God is, uh, who are these people that are parading around as lovers of the dark? Uh, people who are used to living in the dark, uh, they hate the light. Uh, let me say it again. People that love uh, the nighttime uh, and who don't get stuff started until 12 midnight. Uh, I'm talking to somebody. Uh, you can't get what you need done in the daytime, so you're waiting for the night uh, under cloak and dagger to do the things that the enemy has sold into your spirit. Uh, people who are living in darkness, they hate the light. Why? Because light illuminates truth uh, and exposes falsity. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, have you ever been asleep in total darkness uh, and somebody walks into the room and turns on the light? Uh, the first thing you do is start closing your eyes. Uh, why do you close your eyes? Because you prefer to go back into darkness uh, rather than step into the illuminating uh, presence of light. Uh, there are normally two or three things that happen uh, when someone turns on the light. Uh, you start squinting because you really don't want to see uh, what is available to see. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, I just rose to tell a few people, uh, look at somebody and tell them sometimes uh, the light hurts. Uh, come on somebody, sometimes uh, it hurts your eyes. Uh, the more bright the light, the more brilliant the exposure. Uh, you start to shirk from it because uh, you just don't want to know the truth. Uh, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Uh, and he coupled that with the fact uh, that he is the truth. Uh, and the truth always brings light. Uh, that's why when I come to church, I don't want to come always uh, to hear a jump and a shout. Uh, and folks speaking in tongues all the time and running around uh, and jumping and having a good time. Uh, give me the word. Uh, give me the truth. Uh, give me something that will expose the darkness uh, that is trying to take over my life uh, and give me something that I can see. Uh, not only who you are, uh, but I can see who I am uh, and I can get rid of those things that are not in alignment uh, with the perfect and divine will of God. Uh, somebody in the house shout, give me light. 
I want some light so I can know which way God is leading me. Sometimes when you turn on the light, people get angry. They don't want to be exposed. And sometimes when you turn on the light, they start hollering at you. Turn that light out. Turn it out before I do something to you. When God turns on the light, every dark corner is exposed. When God turns on the light, he gives vision to that which you could not see before. When God turns on the light, you see yourself in a perspective that you've never seen before. Somebody shout, Jesus, turn on the light. Have you ever clapped back at somebody huh, because they turned on the light huh, and it caused you to see yourself? Huh? Let me raise my hand huh, because I know sometimes the truth huh, has come and stopped at my house. Huh, and when you're not willing to embrace the truth, huh, you're ready to turn off the light. Huh? Have you ever gotten mad because you were exposed? Huh? Look at somebody and tell them that's what light does. Light does. Light does what it does. I found out that there are three basic things that light does. Light enables you to see that which really was there all the time. The reason you never saw it, because you were walking in darkness, or in other words, you were not close enough to the light. Walking in darkness, brothers and sisters, is walking outside of God's will and God's purpose for your life. As we pursue God, we increase our knowledge of Him. We get closer to the light which identifies our purpose. Don't miss it. There are some things you will never discover about yourself uh, until you start walking in the light. Uh, the second thing that light does, brothers and sisters, uh, it measures. Uh, the reason you can pick up something uh, and look to see if it's straight or crooked uh, is because light is straight. Uh, it comes down the center of the road. Uh, light is never uneven. Uh, it is not crooked. It doesn't bend around corners. Uh, but when you turn on the light, light goes uh, straight from the source. Uh, that's why light is the most common and important measuring stick uh, in the world today. Uh, and because God is light, uh, when you walk in Him, uh, you will always be straight uh, and you'll never be crooked. Uh, when we measure our lives by the light of God, God. Uh, he declares in Isaiah chapter 40 and verse number 4 uh, that every valley shall be exalted uh, and every mountain shall be made low uh, and the crooked shall be made straight uh, and the rough places uh, shall be made plain. Uh, how many times has the enemy tried to sow something crooked in your life uh, and crooked in your spirit? Uh, and you measured it by the light of God's word uh, only to find out that which you thought was straight uh, was crooked before the presence of God. Uh, brothers and sisters, the third thing, uh, among others, that light does, uh, light energizes. In other words, it imparts life. That's why I remember what John said, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Follow me real good. Darkness, brothers and sisters, comes to intimidate. It comes to incarcerate. It comes to stagnate, and it comes to stalemate you from becoming what God the declared you to be uh, before the foundation of the world. Uh, but I just rose to tell the church uh, of the living God uh, that God is not afraid of the dark. Uh, look at somebody and tell them God's not afraid uh, of the dark. Uh, because even though darkness exists, uh, the Bible says in him uh, there is no darkness uh, 
at all. Uh, Psalms 139 and 12 tells us uh, that the darkness cannot hide from God uh, because the night shines as the darkness uh, and because the darkness and the light uh, are the same unto God. Uh, 1 John 1 and 5 tells us God is a light uh, and in him is no darkness at all. Uh, brothers and sisters, when I look at the Greek word uh, where the Bible says that the light shineth uh, and the darkness comprehended it not. Uh, the Greek word for comprehend uh, is katalabamo. Uh, it means that the darkness could not seize light. Uh, the darkness could not possess light. Uh, the darkness could not overtake light. Uh, in other words, I just rose to encourage somebody today. Uh, no matter how dark your condition, uh, no matter how dark your situation, uh, it cannot overtake the fact uh, that you are the light of the world uh, that comes to eradicate darkness of ignorance uh, and illuminate the spiritual knowledge uh, of who Jesus uh, really is. Uh, so as I begin to look at the text today, uh, this man called blind Bartimaeus, uh, the son of Timaeus, uh, the Bible says uh, he cried, Jesus, uh, thou son of David, uh, have mercy on me. Uh, several times in the New Testament, uh, in the word of God, it is recorded uh, where people call Jesus uh, the son of David. Uh, in Matthew chapter 1 and verse number 1, uh, he is recorded in his generation uh, that he is the son of David. Uh, and in Matthew 15 and 22, uh, a Canaanite woman uh, from the region came out and began to cry out saying, uh, have mercy on me, Lord, uh, son of David, for my daughter uh, is cruelly uh, demon-possessed. Uh, and in Matthew 21 and 9, uh, there were crowds that followed him uh, shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, uh, son of David, blessed is he uh, that comes in the name of the Lord. Uh, and even in Revelation chapter 5 and verse number 5, uh, it is recorded that one of the elders said, uh, stop weeping. Uh, I remember what Elder Flores said on last week. Uh, stop weeping. Stop lamenting. Uh, stop crying. Stop bawling your eyes out. Uh, he's on the way. Uh, and so brothers and sisters, uh, when he says stop weeping, uh, he follows it up with behold, uh, the lion that is from the tribe of Judah, uh, the root of David uh, has overcome uh, so that we might be overcomers as well. Uh, if you will, brothers and sisters, uh, I noticed that when Bartimaeus heard uh, that it was Jesus uh, who was about to pass that way, uh, he didn't call him Jesus uh, of Nazareth, uh, but rather he called him Jesus, uh, the son of David. Uh, so the obvious question is why would Jesus uh, call him the son of David uh, and not what the others in the crowd were calling him. Uh, Jesus the son of Nazareth. Uh, it's because David was promised uh, that out of his root and out uh, of his offspring uh, would be a ruler uh, who would rule in the kingdom of men. Uh, he was born in David's city of Bethlehem uh, and the gospel of Matthew records uh, that various people on six different occasions uh, said, Jesus, uh, thou son of David. Uh, that is why on Palm Sunday uh, he received the praise and worship uh, from the people as the son of David. Uh, it is often said uh, that those who are writers and creators, uh, that perfect 
vision uh, means perfect understanding. Uh, and such was the case uh, in our lesson for today. Uh, when we look at our text today, Jesus uh, was coming near the city uh, of Jericho. Uh, there was a certain blind man by the name of Bartimaeus. Uh, and he was sitting on the side of the road. Uh, he was begging. Uh, and sadly, brothers and sisters, uh, at that particular time in history, uh, those who were blind ended up becoming beggars. Uh, brothers and sisters, they had no training uh, for a different vocation in life. Uh, so being blind, they could not apply for certain jobs. Uh, so begging became uh, their life's work. Uh, and so they were relegated to the side of the road uh, in poverty and and begging and dependent on uh, the mercy of those that would pass by. Uh, I'm so glad that Jesus came by because uh, some folks will look at you uh, and see your problem uh, and see your dilemma uh, and won't help you because uh, they're too busy doing what they're doing. Uh, I told you in the past that my wife uh, will always look at me when I'm riding down and we have people uh, that are standing in the road uh, begging and asking for a handout. Uh, I can't tell you how many times uh, I would roll down my window and pull out uh, some money to hand them uh, because that's the type of God that we serve. Uh, he's always working on the behalf uh, of somebody else. Uh, so when Jesus was passing by, uh, when Bartimaeus heard that it was Jesus uh, of Nazareth, uh, instead of calling Jesus of Nazareth, uh, he said, Jesus, uh, thou son of David, uh, have mercy on me. Uh, Bartimaeus heard uh, about Jesus, uh, but he had never seen him before. Uh, because as you listen to the words of Bartimaeus, uh, there are two things of importance uh, that jumps out at us. Uh, the crowd recognized him as Jesus. Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, they saw him as the carpenter's son. Uh, they saw him as the son uh, of Mary and Joseph. Uh, but they didn't see him uh, as the almighty God. Uh, sometimes people uh, that are blind can see more uh, than people with 20-20 vision. Uh, because there is something uh, about a desire uh, to learn more about Jesus. Uh, I would ask the question this morning, uh, is there anybody in the house uh, that's hungry for Jesus? Uh, is there anybody in the house uh, that wants more of the master? Uh, Vine Bartimaeus could not see Jesus physically, uh, but he had a divine insight uh, that this must be the almighty God. Uh, he recognized that Jesus uh, was not just a miracle worker. Uh, but he was the son of God. He's not just a genie that you can ask for a wish. But he is a Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. He is Jehovah Shalom. He is your peace in radical situations. He's Jehovah Mekadish. The Lord of righteousness. He's Jehovah Shama. He's always there. Because he never promised to leave you, huh, nor forsake you. Huh. But the name that I love to hear huh, and the name that I love to call huh, is the name of Jesus. Huh. Because something happens huh, when you call huh, on the name of Jesus. Huh. Can I get about 50 folk huh, to jump up on your feet huh, and shout, Jesus, huh. call him. Huh until you feel your power. Huh? Call him huh? until you feel your deliverance. Huh? Call him huh? until your chains huh? and your fetters break. Huh? Come on, church, huh? and call the name of Jesus huh? and watch demons tremble. Huh? Watch the devil back out huh? because something happens huh? when you call the name of Jesus. Huh? Let the church call him right now.
Hallelujah. Sit down for a moment. I'm really almost done. About what the Bible says is that when blind Bartimaeus began to call on Jesus, those of the people that just wanted something of a relationship of fame and rock star status. See, they wanted to see a rock star, but they didn't want the rock of ages. Uh, they wanted to be in his presence uh, but they did not want to follow him uh, as the God of heaven and earth uh, they did not want uh, a man to become a part uh, of his kingdom uh, and so when the beggar uh, began to open his mouth uh, and say Jesus uh, thou son of David uh, they began to sh sh be quiet uh, you're disturbing uh, our party huh? but blind but a made us huh? said to himself huh? forget y'all huh? I got a need huh? that only this man can provide huh? so the more huh? they told him to be quiet huh? the louder he got huh? Jesus huh? thou son of David huh? have mercy huh? on me huh? the people wanted celebration huh? but they didn't want revelation Revelation, huh? But Bartimaeus did not care. Huh? Is there anybody in here huh, that's ever had a need? Huh? And sometimes God huh, moves on you. Huh? And in the middle of the service, huh, you jump up on your feet. Huh? And you begin to praise. Huh? You begin to run. Huh? You begin to dance. Huh? You begin to sing. Huh? And sometimes the saints huh, don't understand what you're going through huh? so they try to stop you huh? they try to get around you huh? and make sure you don't bump your head huh? but when God's in it huh? look at somebody and tell them God's in it huh? when God's in it huh? you can jump huh? you can shout huh? you can scream huh? you can holler because huh? when God's in it huh? he'll work it out huh? somebody shout glory huh? I began to look uh, at the cold uh, and the heartless rebuff uh, from the people uh, and even perhaps uh, some of the disciples. Uh, you know, at Wells, uh, sometimes church folk uh, can become overprotective. Uh, they're not trying to be wrong. Uh, they're just trying to protect. Uh, and sometimes uh, in our uh, exuberance to protect, uh, we sometimes drive away uh, the very people uh, that God wants to serve. Uh, but all I know uh, that when uh, Bartimaeus uh, started shaking himself, uh, he was blind, uh, but he had a spiritual perception. Uh, this is not just Mary's little baby. Uh, this is not just he uh, who laid in a manger. Uh, it is not he uh, who was the carpenter's son. Uh, but this uh, is the son of God uh, and so while the people uh, were telling blind Bartimaeus uh, be quiet uh, you're causing a ruckus uh, you're causing a, a problem uh, blind Bartimaeus uh, kept on calling Jesus uh, blind Bartimaeus uh, kept on pushing his way uh, it reminds me of uh, the woman with the issue of blood huh? though they tried to block her huh? though they tried to stop her huh? though they tried to impede her progress huh? she said I got to, to touch uh, the hem of his garment huh? is there anybody in the house uh, that has a need huh? that only God can supply huh? jump up on your feet huh? and call him by his name huh? call him huh? until the devil gets back I call him uh, until the power of the Lord comes down. Call him uh, until you get results. Call him uh, until the glory of God uh, comes in the house. Uh, I need about a hundred folk uh, to call the name of Jesus. Oh. Call him. If 
find three people. Tell them something happens uh, when you call the name of Jesus. Uh, come on, get out of your comfort zone. Uh, tell somebody something uh, is about to happen because uh, I know his name. Uh, and something happens uh, when I call the name of Jesus. Come on, tell somebody. Uh, this what I like about it uh, is that when Bartimaeus called Jesus, he didn't call him Jesus of Nazareth, but he called him as a confession that you are Lord. Uh, come on, somebody. People with 20-20 vision uh, couldn't really see him, uh, but blind Bartimaeus uh, called him Jesus. Uh, I know who you are. Uh, when you call him not only uh, with your memory, but with recollection uh, and with brothers and sisters revelation, uh, God, you've gotten his attention. He understood. Something happens when you call the name of Jesus, when you understand that God has given him a name that is above every name, a name that is highly exalted, a name that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. Brothers and sisters, uh, it's impossible to call the name of Jesus uh, and to call it in faith uh, and something powerful uh, not happening in uh, your life. Uh, I love what John said, uh, and whatsoever ye ask uh, in my name, uh, that will I do, uh, that the Father may be glorified uh, in the Son. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, as I conclude this message, uh, the thing that absolutely blesses me uh, beyond measure uh, is that something happened uh, when Bartimaeus called uh, the name of Jesus. Uh, in verse 49, the Bible tells us uh, that when Jesus heard his name, uh, he's walking and no doubt thousands of people uh, are thronging around him. Uh, Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, Jesus, uh, the miracle worker. Uh, Jesus, uh, the way maker. Uh, Jesus, uh, the mender of our brokenness. Uh, Jesus, uh, the joy of my salvation. Uh, Jesus, uh, my peace uh, and my lily of the valley. Uh, Jesus, uh, my bright and morning star. Uh, Jesus heard all of that, uh, but his ears were attuned uh, to his deity. Uh, and when he heard Jesus, uh, thou son of David, uh, have mercy on on me. That's when the Bible says uh, Jesus stopped uh, in his tracks uh, and the scripture says uh, he stood still. Uh, he didn't take another step. Uh, something about uh, the name of Jesus uh, will stop God in his tracks uh, and God will turn uh, and render himself uh, your deliverance. Uh, come on somebody uh, and give God some praise. Call him. Call him. When he called Jesus, thou son of David, listen to what else happened. The Bible says Jesus stood still because he had heard something that he had not heard previously from the crowd. So look what happens next. He tells the same people who told Bartimaeus, be quiet. Shut up, 
You crazy blind Bartimaeus. He tells the same people, go call him. See, the people that tried to get over on you, the people that told you you'll never be nothing, huh? the people who said you'll never amount to anything, huh? God will put a word in their mouth huh? and make them come get you. Look what the master has done. He's turned the situation around. Huh? And he tells your detractors, uh, go call him. Uh, I'm sending you to call him. Uh, I'm not going to do it. Uh, I'm going to turn my word on you. Uh, and now all of the haters, uh, all of the naysayers, uh, listen to what they're saying in the Bible. The master's calling you. Uh, he wants you. Uh, come on, get up. Uh, when God has favor in your life, uh, he he will make even your enemies uh, to be at peace with you. When the people ran to him, Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus, uh, Jesus told us to come get you. First thing he did, the Bible says he threw off his garments. He threw off his past. Because when blind people had a garment, they used it as their source of covering. Didn't have a house to live in, but my garment was my covering. Did not have a place to receive my alms. Uh, so I laid my garment on the ground, and you put alms in it. Uh, their garment became everything to him. But God says, uh, please understand that all of your self-righteousness uh, are as filthy rags. Uh, so I gave him, the songwriter says, uh, my old filthy garment. Uh, and he gave me a robe of pure white. Uh, I'm still living uh, on manna from heaven. Uh, and that's why I'm happy tonight. Uh, do I have some happy folks uh, in the house today uh, that recognize that Jesus just called Hold me, huh? Jesus takes preeminence uh, in my life. Uh, I got to get up uh, and be about my father's business. Uh, do I have some people uh, that recognize uh, that when Jesus called your name, uh, you got to go? Uh, look at three people uh, and tell them, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I got to go. Uh, I can't stay here uh, in this mess uh, any longer. Uh, I can't stay here uh, in this valley huh, of indecision huh, any longer. Huh, I gotta go. Something happens when I call his name. Come on, ministers. We're getting ready. To, God is calling somebody today. I hear him calling. Come unto me, all ye that labor. And are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me, for I am meek and lonely of heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. The last things that is critical to the potency and the power and the presence of what happened in the life. Of Bartimaeus was that God now was giving him an opportunity to have a resurrection in his life. Hallelujah. If you need healing today, call him. If you need deliverance today, call him. If you need peace today, Call him. If you need joy, call him. There's a song that says, Jesus, something special, supernatural about your name. Jesus, something happens when I mention your name. Sometimes we look to other things other systems, 
we look to government, we look to entrepreneurs, we look to those who we feel can answer our need and give us a way out of what we're in. But the answer is Jesus. The answer is he that has loved you with an everlasting love. The answer is he that doesn't care what you did in the past because the blood has washed you and the blood will cleanse you and the blood will release you from everything that the enemy is trying to blackmail you with. It won't work. Hallelujah to God. So what do you do now? Call him. And when he sends the angels to usher you from your seat, don't resist it. After all, you called him. Don't be upset when God sends people to get you that hurt you. <laughs> what if blind Bartimaeus was so persnickety that he said, I know your voice. You talked about me. I know you. You mean me no good. God said, those of you that hurt him the most, I'm going to send you as an ambassador for Christ. And they came and they said with exuberance, guess what? Jesus is calling you. Guess what? The master wants you. Guess what? He that sits up high and looks down low and rules in the kingdom of men, he's calling you. I'm telling you today, Jesus is calling you. If you've never been water baptized in Jesus' name, if you've never been filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, if you've never tenured a relationship with the Lord, get up from your seat. If you need prayer for a circumstance or a situation, please know and understand that God is able to supply all of your needs according to to his riches Jesus, Jesus. in glory. the church stand. We're getting ready to pray now. When I call you Jesus 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 I love to call his name Something happens when I call you Jesus 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 would you be so kind to grab somebody Jesus, by the hand? I know sometimes we don't like to do that. Something but that's contrary to the God that we serve. Jesus touched people that nobody else would touch. Jesus, Jesus, he touched people Jesus, with communicable Jesus, diseases. He touched lepers. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Touched people with all manner of contagiousness. But he touched them with purity. When I call you That I'm not just grabbing your hand Jesus, Because the pastor Jesus, said so Jesus, But the hand that you grab I want Jesus, you to release Jesus, virtue Jesus, Into that hand Release a prayer of power And a prayer of purpose In order that God can get the glory Out of his word here today Jesus, Saints, something happened Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Something happens when I call Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Bow your heads. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Something happens. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this moment that you have given to us, God, allowing us to call on your name, allowing us, oh God, to be touched once again by your presence, allowing us, God, to be reassured that you love us, that you have not stopped thinking about us, that you've not stopped caring about us, God. We thank you, oh God, because you know of every situation and every circumstance in this house, God. You know of every need that needs to be met, God. And we know that you're able to meet every single need, God. We know that you can manifest yourself as a healer, God. You can manifest yourself as our provider, God. You can make a way out of no way, God. Hallelujah. You can be the father to the fatherless, oh God. Those that are in need of direction, those that are in need of strength, God. Send your word even now, God. And help us, oh God, to be reminded of this word that has come into this house today, oh God. Hallelujah. That as we call on the name of Jesus, something happens, God. Hallelujah. When people begin to look at us and to see why have you changed, God, let us respond and say, it was when I called on the name of Jesus, when I believed, when I put my faith and confidence in God, that's when things begin to turn around in my life. God, we pray, God, that you will continue to increase in us the confidence that we need, oh God, the boldness that we need, oh God, to live the life, God, that you have designed for us to live, a life of purpose, God, a life of destiny, oh God. Help us, oh God, to to lift up our hung down heads, oh God. To look to the hills which comes my our help, oh God. Knowing that our help comes from you, oh God. Knowing that we can cast all our cares on you, God. Because you care for us, oh God. Knowing, oh God, that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard those things that you have prepared for those who love you, oh God. Knowing, God, that you will not stop loving us and we won't stop loving you, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. We love you, God. We need you now more than ever, God. We need you now more than ever, God. Even somebody who might be walking down the street right now, God, I pray they hear the sound that's coming from the sanctuary, God, and come through the doors and say, what must I do to be saved, God? I pray, Father, that you will continue to draw all men unto you, God, as we lift up the name of Jesus. Have your way, God, and prepare us, oh God, for what you continue to do in our life, oh God. Those that you will send into our lives, oh God, whether they be enemies, whether they be people that we disliked, oh God, help us to be in the right mind and in the right spirit, oh God, to receive the word of God, to be ready for the move of God, to be sensitive to the sound of your voice, oh God. We want to be right where you would have us to be, oh God. We want to be positioned for your glory, oh God. We don't want to miss anything, oh God. Help us to tune out every distraction and everything that would get in the way, God. Help us to get 100% of everything that you want to do, God. We need you now, God. In the name of Jesus, continue to bless our pastor. Continue to bless our first lady, oh God. Continue to download into them and restore that which has been poured out on today, God. Father, we thank you for every blessing in this house, oh God. We thank you for the victory that we now have. God, we love you and give us an ear to hear what you will continue to say unto us. God, we thank you. We love you. We honor you. We adore you, God. There's nobody like you, God. Thank you for loving us, God. Thank you for salvation that we can rejoice in, God. Thank you for loving us, God. Thank you for it all, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Something happened. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah.